now for a half-hour documentary on the aftermath of Flood 85, next on your hometown station, WDBJ-7. Hundreds of millions of dollars in property destroyed. More than 40 people dead in Virginia and West Virginia. Thousands of homes damaged or destroyed, some just washed away without a trace. The statistical record of devastation from the flood of 1985 offers only a hint of the impact on our personal lives. I was also involved in the flood in 72, but it didn't get me as bad as it did this time. And even now I find myself dreaming of this and like waking up in the middle of the night and just thinking, I mean, am I safe? Is it going to happen again? Should I move? And then I go back and say, well, if it happens, it happens. What's the use of moving? Relying heavily on witnesses and victims of the flood, like Dora Graham, and the extraordinary visual images recorded by News 7 photographers, we've prepared an instant history of the flood of 85. <laughs> It wasn't a hurricane, but the remnants of tropical storm Juan. It moved out of the Gulf of Mexico into the Ohio Valley, bringing us only light drizzle by midweek. Then almost an inch of rain fell on Halloween, more than that the next day. Almost two inches drenched Roanoke over the weekend. By Sunday night, more than four and a half inches of water had saturated the soil. As Juan retreated toward New England, a strong cold front advanced from the west. At the same time, a complex low pressure system moved out of the Gulf through the Carolinas. The new storm stalled right on top of us, dumping more than six and a half inches of rain Monday alone, bringing the total to more than 11 inches in less than a week. We were warned of an impending flood, but no one believed it could come so fast. The Roanoke River rose more than 15 feet in that one day to twice the normal level of a flood stage, surpassing all the high water marks of past years. Suddenly, we were simply underwater. everything. I don't have anything except my cat. <laughs> That's it. yesterday at 3.30 and I stood on the bridge and I cried a lot. It's just unbelievable. We used to play on the playground here when we were children. I just can't believe it. We couldn't get help. We called the Salem State Police. We called the Sheriff's Office. So finally, about uh, two hours later, we called the prayer chain. And the minute the prayer chain went out, the water started receding. We'd asked them to pray that the helicopters would come in and the, prayer uh, the water would recede. And the minute it went out, it did. <laughs> Thank you. 
Everything that I have is submerged underwater right now. The only thing that I have is what I'm wearing right now. It may get stuck. Our estimated total damages in the city and I underline the word estimated, is between $115 million and $125 million. First of all, we have to try to get the mud up, but our Christmas is wiped out. We don't have any Christmas merchandise that doesn't have mud on it. And the worst damage of all is to the uh, Mill Mountain Theater. It got up on the stage. It, it uh, completely destroyed a piano. It damaged a lot of their costumes and uh, the staging. Okay, Roger. Be advised, uh, we're stationary at this time, and uh, we'll begin moving in about uh, five mic over. Roanoke and the immediate area around it were the hardest hit. Initial estimates of damage reached $300 million in the greater Roanoke area alone. That figure constituted almost half the total for the entire state. That's correct. The uh, total estimates and assessments to date uh, exceed about $650 million, uh, and they'll probably go higher than that before it's over. We didn't have to go far to find flooding outside the valley. The Maggoty Creek overflowed into the town of Boone's Mill, causing concern for a brethren minister, one who'd been through it before. It's already in the church, so I'm not worried about getting in the house. It's about uh, three foot from the house, back of the house, and uh, <clears throat> I'm just thinking about where I'm going to go. Do you think the church might be ruined? No, no. We, we had this happen about five, six years ago, and it, the fire company came over and pumped it out afterwards about for probably about four foot of water in the basement and uh, I have an office over in the other building probably water in the first floor over there. Have you ever seen it this bad? Yes, it was about like it is now before when it went in but it looks like it's going to get worse. It got a lot worse. The Blackwater River annexed much of Route 220 between Boone's Mill and Roanoke slowing traffic, then forcing officials to close the road altogether. Later that evening, two people were killed in a car headed for Rocky Mount. Officials in Virginia attributed 20 deaths to the weather. Could Smith Mountain Lake withstand the onslaught? Residents on the lake braced for disaster, but it never came. Though marinas and homes on the lake suffered much of the same damage other communities felt, the worst problems were found in what came with the high water, raw sewage direct from Roanoke's overflowing wastewater treatment plant.
everything was blocked in this area. You couldn't get in, you couldn't get out. The only way you'd out was either by helicopter or across the mountain. The James River continued to carry destruction in its path, leaving 18 feet of water in a couple of dozen industries in the lower basin area of Lynchburg. It's a major disaster, as you know, along the James. This is the highest water that uh, the Lynchburg area has had. It's a very serious situation. I've been working down here 37 years, and this, this is the third flood I have, have seen down here. Well, this is the worst. This is about a, a third worse than the, the past two we've had. Okay, I wanted to stay here on part of Glass Bridge, and we have an odor of uh, something that's coming down this way now. The water is coming down the When fire broke out at the Griffin Pipe Company, firemen had difficulty getting to it for the floodwaters. It happened to be election night in Virginia, when Lynchburg became the first locality to call on the National Guard to provide security. Many other cities eventually found the additional troops provided the only way local police could keep order, looking for looters. While damage in Virginia was bad, West Virginia was worse. We were totally wiped out. All, this, all these TVs behind you are totally gone? Totally. Did you have insurance? No. A shop full of waterlogged television sets represented just a small part of the $200 million in damages in West Virginia. Well, everybody's a little uh, nervous and I guess you'd call anxious. Well, they don't really know what power's coming on. Or Last night we had curfews, nobody was allowed out. After 7 o'clock, you wasn't allowed on the streets. 8,000 homes were damaged or destroyed, 21 bridges knocked out, countless businesses obliterated by flood. 33 of the Mountain State's 55 counties were underwater at one time. We have no insurance, but we've got a lot to be thankful for. You say you have no insurance. Uh, could you get flood insurance here? Yes, we could have, but we had an accident about a year ago, and then my husband had a heart attack. And right at the time, we had, didn't have enough income, you know, to keep up the flood insurance, so we dropped it. Any regrets? No, because God saved our lives. We've got a lot to be thankful for. 23 people were killed in West Virginia, many more missing, still unaccounted for days after the floodwaters began to recede. Clifton Forge was cut off by the James River, 
water conquering that section of 220 south of the city. Smith Creek has rarely threatened Clifton Fords. This time, the rain unleashed a hidden fury bent on the destruction of much of the downtown business area. In one shop, a hairdresser was tending to a customer when suddenly the storm took over. I heard something running like I thought it was the commode running over. So I went back to the back to check. And when I looked down at the back door, there was this brown, muddy water coming in. So I thought I'd peek out the window. And when I looked out the window, there was this water all the way up to the door, you know, about four foot high. And I just, I just stood there. I didn't know what to do at first. And then I, I came to the front door to see who was out front and what everybody was doing. So a guy ran outside the building, you know, he said, you, you better get the hell out of there. So I went back to get my customer. I said, we got to go. So I brought her out, and then I just come out, and then it all broke loose. No one will ever know for sure how bad it got in the Botetourt County town of Buchanan. The water rose so rapidly it broke the flood gauge. For a community of its size, just 1,200 people, it may have been hit harder than any other. An entire company, an employer of 160 people, was wiped out. The local sewage treatment plant was destroyed. Most residents lost a lot of their personal belongings. Many lost everything. One man saw five pieces of property, homes and businesses, go down the James. I'm not afraid of James River. I really am not. And I, I couldn't leave my home because that's our home, the only home we have owned. And my husband's dead. It's a lot of memories there that is gone. I know that. But it'll be okay. Everything will turn out fine, I'm sure. I love the river. I, 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 don't, I don't blame the river. I don't blame anyone. It's just a thing that may happen once every 100 years or it may happen next week. We don't know. That's a chance we take when we're in business on the river. I, I feel maybe in the future that if we had a little more warning that we may be able to salvage, could have salvaged more than we did. But as it came up, it wasn't anything anyone could do. To 160 people depending on us for a livelihood and uh, we're about the main support of this town one of the main supports and they have nowhere else to go so eventually we'll have to relocate we just can't live from day to day worrying whether the river is going to get us we've done the eight years and said well the gathright dam maybe is our salvation but apparently it wasn't i lost probably total around half a million dollars inventory on uninsured no insurance Without outside help or some type of government help, I don't see any future. I felt like sitting down crying at that time because of the hard work that the people of the town have put into their homes and the businesses. And to see them all go down the James River, it's, uh, it's sad. Material things can be replaced. Now, it's some things like baby pictures of your family. It's sad to lose because you can't replace them. They help me, but he has a Y'all be careful, honey. Honey? Right there, be fine. And I think with the cooperation of the community as a whole, uh, we'll get back on our feet. The town of Buckhannon is a, is a good town and they're good people. They help each other. We've, they stick together. Trapped in a, up in a building at Hollins College for 27 hours. I, I saw that. Wasn't that something We can't, we can't give up. We got to keep on going because God don't mean for us to give up. And I hope and pray that everybody will be okay. Everything will turn out okay for everybody.
I got up and I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, where's your faith? All these years you've been talking about faith, so put your faith in it. So I suddenly decided, hey, I've got a son and children and uh, I want to go back. And it's a challenge. It's a new challenge. Though more than three dozen people lost their lives in the flood, countless others were saved. 240 successful rescues were accomplished in Roanoke alone. On the Hollands College campus, a telephone repairman spent 27 hours clinging to life before scuba divers found him and got to him. Officer Ewer started yelling for him and he started responding. So we just basically followed his voice and then he saw the searchlights and started directing us in. I heard somebody holler, Mike. And it's the first voice I heard. You know, and I, I had about a, an air pocket of about a foot when the water stopped. And I was hanging on the ceiling by this conduit. And I had about a foot of airspace. And I just, and then the water stopped and everything got real quiet. And it just stayed that way for a good while. And then it just gradually started going back down. I thought it was a heck of a predicament to, to be in. I didn't wanna I didn't want to end that way, I tell you. It's really nice to have something like that happen to you. It's not nice to go through what you have to go through, but the elation that you have to find that your loved one is okay, it's, it's a high that you don't forget. You really don't. In Salem, as volunteers worked into the night to save 60 employees at Roanoke Fashion, one rescue worker was swept into the raging creek and presumed drowned. Four hours later, Joe Cunningham had pulled himself out of the water and rejoined the squad. If it hadn't been for that a helicopter that they leased another 90 seconds and forward, my son and two others would have gone down towards Smith Mountain Lake. We're so thankful to be here, my son and myself, 90 seconds longer and we'd been gone. There's no way that anybody, the force of the river came right through my place of business. Just totally just wiped it out. Just in a matter of minutes, the river course just changed and came right straight through. Oh, Nobody called me or nobody told me to move and I had my cars and I was the last one to be picked up by boats and I was hollering for help and help and I kept standing there and I thought I was going to drown and the water got up to my waist and finally a boat come and got me out. Oh, what? 
blocking silk ones and one that's turning contact like this. We got the man in the brown trailer out and got him to warm up. He's all right. He's always had hot fun when he warmed up uh, the top of the animal. But uh, so we, we run through here. We're trying to put him and got him to warm up. Once you got kids on the furniture or something. Roanoke throughout this disaster has continued to shine. And we look forward to the next 100 years as a city excited about its future, a city of opportunity, a city of unity, of purpose, and seeking quality of life that's good for all of its citizens. And I want to tell you that in times like these, I think the very fabric out of which we are made may be tested. That comes a testing time for all of us in life. And I think this is a time when as a community we have to exhibit faith. For the undergirding strength of our people has come through the test of the flood. And the ground upon which to place our feet has proved to be of stone. We will have a period of recovery. One Ocus will stage a comeback. For ours is a common cause. There are citizens out there, 100,000 of them, working and praying and toiling and rebuilding and washing down streets and picking up trash and carrying it to the landfill, but doing those things that must be done to bring it back. 